All right, folks, we're going to hopefully keep your attention with some interesting stuff today. A little bit of live presentation, some dialogue with our guests here. This is uh, Mr. Ron Rankin from Penn Line. He drove up from Mont well, you guys were right around Montorzo, right? Uh, Scottsdale, PA. Scottsdale, PA, yeah, down around Pittsburgh. Braved the weather and the floods and the landslides to come up here this morning and talk with you about opportunities at companies such as his. This is Mr. Paul London from Occupa uh, Office of Vocational Rehab. He is actually a career counselor, works with young people and old people um, and everywhere in between folks that are looking to, maybe they had uh, some sort of disability, they've been injured, they can't go back into the workforce as they normally would, and Paul's job is to help them restructure their lives, get the training and the education that they need. He works a lot with people that are looking for alternative uh, ways of gaining employment rather than the traditional what is it that we hear so often go to college get your four-year degree and get the heck out of central Pennsylvania why because there's nothing here and if you want to succeed that's the formula that you have to adhere to now I'm seeing some people nodding their heads today that's what we're going to talk about we're going to say listen that's a fine path nothing wrong with that path this is not an anti-college message it's a simple reality check and we're going to talk with you today about different options that you have that you may not be even aware that you have because you're not being exposed to it. That's the point of this. So Jeff, thanks for the introduction. Myself, my name is Samuel Otero. I am a native of Clearfield and much like many of you guys, you know, when I was 17, I was the classic, I'm going to go to college and get the heck out of here because there's nothing here. Well, 20 something years later, I've moved back home. What I do is I'm a media professional. I actually have a television show that airs on Fox every Saturday night focusing on career education. It's kind of cool. You should check that out. I also have a new uh, web development program that we're doing called The Kinetic, which is all geared at putting together uh, uh, job seekers with employers and educators, kind of making the job search fun. We're sort of blending MySpace with monster.com. It's very cool and hopefully you guys will be able to utilize this thing to kickstart some of your careers and learn a little bit more. Um, and uh, I teach this stuff. I also make videos and uh, marketing videos and DVDs and stuff like that. So a lot of opportunities in multimedia production too that I think a lot of you folks may not even be aware of because so many of the schools that are in this area aren't, aren't focusing on that. So there's a whole broad gamut of what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to get started with some basic, boring PowerPoint stuff, all right? So stick with me here and bear with me as we move through this thing. Okay, what are we talking about? Well, with our cheesy little graphic shows us here, exactly, the key to success is perseverance over failure. That's really what it comes down to. Um, can we... Turn that light back on if you would, Jeff. Yeah, I want to see. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. You can? All right, cool. I'm going to leave that on. When okay. we play the videos, we'll turn it off. Okay. Because that'll kill, that's going to kill the video. Oh. We want to be able to, uh, we want to have part of this thing online, actually, so if any of the students couldn't make it today, they can go back and watch it. So, um, the kinetic.org is our website, and we're, um, as again, as I'm saying, we're working with educators and employers all around the state to promote these ideas and opportunities through new media. Let me ask you guys something. How many of you are going to go home tonight, play around, and watch videos on MySpace? Or whatever, YouTube, Google Video. Any of it? Come on, it's not going to kill you to raise your hands, you guys, right? Right? New media. You, there we go. They're getting there. They, we, we get it. All right? We're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about, you know, jackass style videos or somebody pushes their kid down a, down a hole, you know. That's what we wanted to talk about, you know. But there's a whole new world of new media out there. You guys know that. You grew up with this stuff. You understand that. Very effective tools that are at your disposal. Now they, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have this stuff. Now you can get online and you can learn. You can watch a fun video about how to write a resume. You don't have to sit there and read all sorts of boring stuff. You can actually use the new media to educate yourself, have fun while you're doing it. We want to get into some of that today. So we're going to pass out some flyers a little bit later that you can take home with you in regards to the kinetic. All right, let me ask you guys something. Okay, look at this guy. This is, what, this is part of what we're talking about here. All right? Big wrench, 
got some dirt on his head, hard-working man. I want to ask you guys something. How many of your parents or teachers or your aunts and uncles are saying to you, I want my kid to grow up and be a plumber? You ever heard that? No? No. No. Okay. I want you to consider something. And, and, and again, we're not advocating any one specific path. It's very important that you understand that here. What we want to do is have you come away with an open mind to all sorts of different, whether you go to college, a trade school, go into the military, start your own business perhaps, not enough talk these parts about entrepreneurship, in my estimation, or perhaps you want to just jump right into the workforce. <coughs> Either way, whatever you choose, know what you're getting into. For instance, what does it take to be a plumber? Okay? If it's something that you find fascinating or interesting, or maybe you think you could go that way for a little while, you gotta learn about it, right? That's how you know what it takes. But did you know the majority of plumbers, pipe fitters, and seam fitters are making between $14.70 and $25.90 an hour, with a median income of $19.30 an hour, with the lowest tenth on that pay scale making under $11.20, and the highest tenth making $32.30 an hour. Thirty-two thirty an hour. Add that up. What's thirty-two thirty times forty hours in a work week? Who's the math genius in the room here? Yeah, you're you're looking at a chunk of change. Now let me ask you something. What do you suppose the guy that runs the plumbing company is making as he's billing his clients, paying his people twenty-five to thirty dollars an hour? Okay. So, is there a future in the manual trades? <laughs> yeah. Ask your parents last time they had a plumber or somebody come out. Last week I had a guy come out from Grampian Hardware. He was in my house for six minutes and fixed the latch on my truck, my uh, washing machine that was busted. 65 bucks. Six minutes, I timed him. That's what are you going to do? We take a break and let it Absolutely. Okay, Let's bring some more kids in. Right over there against the wall. You're going to have to stand. Yeah. Just watch the camera, folks. Yeah, just watch. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, come on, come on. Standing room only. That's what we like, right? All right. So modern SAP is here. Okay. Hello, Cameron University. All right, come on. Okay. Watch, watch, just watch the court. That's okay. You can go right there. Okay. All right, back to what we're talking about. So as just as an example, whether whether you're again you're looking at going the academic route or you're looking to go into a manual trade, or maybe you need to go into some sort of trade to be able to get you through college. You know, whatever it is you're going to do, know what it is that you're doing. But how many of you here, and, and, and I know I heard this growing up, get a real job. Again, right? We're, what we're telling you is your dream, whatever it may be, whatever your career path might be that you believe that you want to pursue, do it. You're going to be surrounded with adults that have been, and you are surrounded with adults, that have gone down various paths in their life. Based on their particular experience, they're going to attempt to impart upon you their wisdom that they have gained over the years through standing up, taking a run, and tripping and falling, and saying, nah, this wasn't the right move. Let me tell you, young man, let me tell you, young lady, here's what you need to do. Realize that everybody's experience is unique. Everyone's experience is unique. When they get out of bed in the morning, you need to finally ask them this question. Are you doing what you want to be doing? Are you happy? What is the measure of success for you is not necessarily the measure of success for somebody else, right? So don't take anything that anybody's giving you as gospel. The point being, get out there, educate yourself. Jump into it, try different things, pick a path that you're true to, and remember that you can. You can. Within limitations, there are some things that we want to talk with you about in regards to being real with yourself. For instance, young fella, you're, you're, you're a young man here, you're clearly slight of stature, you're not going to grow up and replace Shaquille O'Neal in his position with his professional basketball team, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's not bashing you, that's not putting you down. But we do have limitations. Myself, when I grew up, I was terrible in math. Absolutely terrible. 
Huge mistake. Went on to electronics engineering because I was sold by a recruiter to go to an electronics engineering school. Found out that I have to listen to a Pakistani engineer who I couldn't understand and learn about math and algorithms and everything, which I hated in the first place. And if I would have known that before I would have went there, I would have never went down that path. $8,000 later, I dropped out and ended up going in a completely different path, which we know the majority of you are Paul. How many times are you going to pick and alter your career path, not your entire path in life, average across the nation, how many times are they going to end up switching their path? All these kids that are <coughs> graduating now, we're being told you're going to have a career change, not a job change, but a career change at least seven times before you retire. <laughs> There's a reality check. So get a real job. Well, you know what? That, that means something different to everybody. Again, get out there and explore. Some understanding. It's very important that you guys come away with nothing else that you understand that there are a ton of misconceptions that are out there. There are also a lot of truisms that are out there in regards to how you get to where it is that you want to be in life. But two of the common misconceptions that we run into as employers, as entrepreneurs, as career counselors, as educators, these are pretty common things that we hear. That there's no opportunity in central Pennsylvania. I mean, we hear that. You've got to get out of here if you want to make anything happen in your life. And the, again, back to this broad picture, which a lot of young, ever since I was in school, was fed... The only path to success is to get a four-year degree and leave. Now, I'm going to ask you. We had some brave souls raise their hands earlier admitting that they cruise the web at night and watch videos. How many of you have heard something similar to that? From whatever source. I don't even care where it comes from. Teachers, friends, parents, whatever. Are you hearing that? Are you? Are you? Is anybody else hearing that? Come on, folks. Let's get real. Are you? You know? What? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> it says, all right. And, and again, again, if you want to be a brain surgeon, well, there may be some truth to that. That's not going to necessarily happen here working at Clearfield Hospital. Maybe. Depends on if they, you know. But <laughs> you guys understand our point here. Now, a reality check. I want to see some hands. How many of you... How many of you are going on to college? I mean, now, when I say college, I don't mean you know an 18-month technical program or an associate's degree, set post-secondary uh, education of a different nature, but a four-year college. How many of you? Raise your hands. And you're, 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 is that a design of yours and you want to go or factual? Are you going to go? Do you know that for a fact? Okay, several of you. Here's the reality. Now, again, do we have some folks that are looking to come in? No? Okay. The reality of the situation with young people going off to college today, now these, uh, these statistics are actually from the Department of Labor and Industry, and I think they're a couple years old. They've probably changed a little bit since we've made this slide. But uh, in general, how this works is we've got about 70% across the country of high school graduates are looking to go on to pursue a traditional four-year degree because they believe that that is the magic bullet and that's the way you go to be successful. But the reality is, in our economy, that only about 20% of the available good-paying jobs in our country on any, on any given year that are being generated are actually going to the kids that graduated with those four-year degrees. Because there's a whole other economy that's out there that many of us aren't being told about. 60% of those jobs, so 60% of those 21%, are actually jobs that require specialized skills. <coughs> Whatever it might be. Running an MRI machine, climbing a, 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 an electrical tower, and working on 7 billion gigawatt uh, electric lines for pen lines or, or uh, uh, computer systems, IT, welding, whatever, from manual to high tech. 60% of the jobs that are created in this country in any given year require specialized training that a traditional four-year college degree isn't prepping you for. So again, you have alternatives if that's the type of person that you are and the type of, 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 of I guess, the way that you learn, okay? It's not bad. 
Why are you confused? Well, because the reality is this is what we're traditionally being fed. You know, we, let, we have the college recruiters and we have the folks that are telling us this is the way that you got to go. This is, what our this is what our culture teaches us. All right, so what is the effect that this mentality has on our local economy? Students are making choices for their future based on very limited career education and exploration. Local industry is having very much having difficulty finding qualified employees because so many of the best and the brightest kids are leaving to seek opportunity elsewhere because they don't think that there's opportunity here. And something that I'm extremely passionate about, local entrepreneurial development is severely depressed. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you know what an entrepreneur is? No? Anybody? Anybody have an idea what an entrepreneur is? Now, there's your homework assignment. I'm not going to give this one to you. Go to it. If you know how to spell dictionary.com, look up entrepreneur. You'll find out. Okay. It, it's somebody that's self-employed. It's, self it's, a, it's a business person. How many of you want to go out there and be your own boss and start your own firm and do your own thing? Let's see some hands. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, exactly. You can do it. Find your niche, get the education that you need that's going to suit your dream, and then you go for it. That's the secret to success, folks. It's pretty simple. So, we were talking about the skilled trade. So what's up with career and technical education, okay? We hear a lot, I know when I was in school, you know, the Votech, the, you know, this was where the kids that couldn't cut it in the academic classes went. That was the perception. Today's Votech, if you will, what you're now calling career and technical education, so different. I mean, kids are going there and learning to be nurses and getting out there and getting paid $18, $20 an hour after getting their nursing degree, you know, making really good money helping people heal. There are career and technical schools that you can go to to learn. A, I went over some of the trades earlier, and we're going to talk about some of the how, how the trades and the career clusters are put together for you to understand how these things work. But the opportunities are enormous. You do not have to go to four-year degree, eight years. Suppose you want to work in the health field, for instance, right? How many of you would like to help people heal, okay? All right, 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 cool. Maybe, let me ask you, what are your grades in biology? What are your grades in science, right? Maybe your mind works in such a way that you just don't like that stuff and you can't handle that very well. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how you work. That's how you work. Now, the reality of the situation is there's a ton of really cool opportunities that are out there in the healthcare field where you can make a lot of money, help people heal without having to go back to school or stay in school for eight years or ten years doing something that you're really not cut out to do. That's part of being real with yourself. You can go out there and you can go to school for maybe two years, in some cases less, and learn how to run a CAT scan machine or an MRI machine and making thirty-five, forty, fifty $50,000 a year right out of the gate and high and work anywhere in the country. These are high demand fields. That's just one example of what I'm talking about. So, many of you are going to say, have your parents tell you, well, you know, I want to be a doctor, whatever. Well, maybe that's not what you cut out to do, but there are a lot of other options within that cluster. Don't be afraid to explore those things. And don't see them as lesser than. You know, a doctor can't do his job without a qualified MRI technician taking the pictures and showing him what's inside that person's body. It's not a lesser than choice, folks. So, career and technical education can help you get on the path with really unlimited options. There's so many options that are available out there in whatever it is that you want to get into. <laughs> Making real choices. Again, career options and education based on the real world. What are we seeing? We talked about that. You saw the numbers. Those are some real choices to make some serious money. And working with progressive technologies, too. I mean, how many of you might be thinking, for instance, okay, am I going to consider a career in welding? How many of you would consider a career in welding? Okay. Wow! Cool. Right on. All right. So we need to talk then because we have, we've got some people that you guys need to meet. Now, 
Several of you know what's going on out there in welding these days. Some of these cats may not, but they may be interested in robotics. Do you know Miller Welding over in Brookville just recently spent millions of dollars putting in high-tech robotic welders. You, you, they, these are not, you know, they're not hiring backyard mechanics that, that, that you know, they can weld a gas tank in Daddy O's garage to run these multi-million dollar robotic machines. This is specialized <laughs> specialized education and these cats are getting real money for what they're doing working with cool technology again case in point the MRI technician and again so many of these types of careers are really cutting edge and they're fun they're fun and they're entertaining and they can lead to an exciting life all right this is what we're talking about so much of your so much of your career path up to this point being a student is guided by the state, of course, and standards and all that kind of stuff. And they kind of lump things together in career clusters. This comes from our friends at the Department of uh, Career and Technical Education down in Harrisburg. How a lot of these things are put together. You know, agriculture, food, natural resources, architecture, and construction. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But you get, again, let's look at health sciences. What does that mean? That could be anything from a phlebotomist who takes blood and looks at it underneath the microscope and then analyzes it for the doctor and gets paid $12 to $15 an hour, to an MRI technician, to a doctor, to a home health care nurse, you name it, okay? So look at these clusters. The key here is find something that you like. Find something that you love to do Zero in on one or two of these clusters, dig into it, meet the people in the trade that are doing these things, and get out there into the real world and try it. So what's the measure of success here? Again, everybody's measure of success is different. But in general, it's having good options, putting that together with some real choices that are actually going to lead you where you want to go, Having fun. How many times do you hear that? How many times do you hear adults telling you that that is one of the prerequisites to being successful in life is that you have a ball doing what you're doing? Do you hear that? No. Not too often. I'm here to tell you that is absolutely key and crucial. If you don't get out of bed in the morning with a feeling and a sense of passion and verve for what you're doing, what's the point in being alive? If it's just paying the bills, a monkey can go out and make money and be taught to do something manual to get paid just to pay the bills. You're put on this planet to do something, guys and girls. You know? Find out what it is and pursue it and do it with love and passion and, and get out there in your community and make a difference and build a life for yourself and help other people at the same time while you're doing it. And so much of that comes from leading by example. When you're successful and you're happy, other people see that and they'll learn from you. Use that as a motivating factor. You put that together all with making a bunch of money and man, you're off to what? What could that possibly equal? Success. Right? It's a pretty simple notion. But it really all comes down to you. All comes down to you. Make the right choices. Educate yourself. So, how do you make the right choice? Lots of people telling you different things. As I said, take it in, process it, consider it, investigate it. Worst thing you can do is be apathetic. Does anybody know what apathy is? I see, a, I see a little bit of it expressed here. Some kids putting their heads down and sleeping through this thing, okay? You understand what I'm saying? You need to wake up. You need to have passion for life. You need to be able to focus on something that means something to you and make a go of it. Otherwise, you're coasting. And you're being apathetic. And you're letting the world forge your future for you. And I can guarantee you, 20, 30 years from now, many of you, if you walk down the path of apathy, you're going to be sitting back and going, what, what did I do with my life? Is that what you want? No. You're better than that. You know it. So make it happen. How do you do that? First thing is getting real with yourself. It's understanding what your limitations are. It's understanding where your talents lie. What are you good at? Not what your friends tell you that you're good at, because I can tell you, from first-hand experience. I remember when I was exploring careers in media and writing. I'm also a writer. I blog and, and, and I, I do news stuff. And one of the, one of the, the, the most mind-opening uh, quotes that I heard was from Stephen King who said, you know, 
He was turned that Stephen King, we know who Stephen King is, right? Well, the guy's rich. One of the most prolific and, 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 and popular writers of all time. Movies made out of his stuff. He, publishing house after publishing house after publishing house after publishing house, turned him down and they said, it's crap, you're never going to make it, kid, forget it. And he said one of, the, one of the things that he learned that he would impart upon anybody that's trying to get into any kind of career is don't necessarily take the words and the, 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 the critique of those closest to you as gospel in regards, and the be all and the end all as in regards to what it is that you should be doing with your life. Because those closest to you, sometimes they have a different vision for you because they love you. And they don't necessarily maybe want to see you going down that route. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But again, you know, get out there, put your work out there, take your lumps, learn from it, and just keep moving. Take the constructive criticism. That's part of getting real about yourself. And Paul's going to talk with you about that in a moment. Explore the real world. Okay? Now, some of you guys said you were going to go, you want to explore uh, careers in welding. Have you gone into a shop such as Miller Welding? Have you gone into a high-tech shop and actually seen what they're doing in the real world? Have you guys done that yet? No. You need to do that. How do you know that you want to be a, a, a career in welding if you don't know what welding means today? How do you know that you want to be a nurse unless you've went and job shadowed and saw it firsthand what it is that they do on a daily basis? How do you know that you want to be whatever? unless you've seen it and experienced it and tasted it and smelled it and did it. How do you know? You're relying on other people to tell you, right? Don't be apathetic. There are programs, there are ways that you can get out there, job shadow, do internships, get into the real world, see what it is that you like, go after it, and I guarantee you, guarantee you, you're going to wake up and you're going to have some serious reality checks. Because it may not be what you think that it is. And it may be better. That's not necessarily a negative thing. You may find something, a career, you had no idea. Wow, this is cool. I like this. Because you didn't explore it. Develop your skills, like, like uh, spelling, you know. <laughs> You're losing that. Missed it. Develop your skills based on what I have a typo in there, I believe. Um, develop your skills based on what it is that you want to do and where you want to go. Once you explore the real world and you've gotten real with yourself as to what your talents are, then get, get to work. Develop the skills that you need to build that career. It's a pretty simple formula, folks. All right. Now we're going to talk about getting rational, being rational, versus getting real. All right. Getting real with yourself. What does that mean? It means looking in the mirror and saying, who am I? What was I put on this planet to do? Most of us at 17, 18 years old are going to go, I don't know. But a lot of us do know. A lot of us have that something inside, right, that says, no, man, I know. This is what I want to do. My little girl, eight years old, she makes books, illustrates them, writes them out, draws them. She said to me the other day, she goes, I don't know why I make books. She goes, I've been thinking about that a lot recently. Why do I make books? I said, this is what you were put, to do, put on the planet to do. Pursue it. Go. Go. Do it. Be an illustrator. Write a book. Become famous. What do you want to do? What are you good at? Can you do what you want to do in this area? Or is one of those misconceptions that we talked about true in your regard? Okay? There are certain things that you may want to get into that our local economy simply cannot sustain for you. And there are no opportunities in that here. I'm not saying that it's not true completely. But... Across the board, you know, you, you gotta, you, you're not going to know unless you get out there and you explore it, right? Don't let fear be your motivating factor for doing what you're doing. The reality of the situation is you got to get up in the morning, you got to get into the real world, you got to pay the rent, you got to put food in your belly, if you got a kid, you got to take care of your kid, you got to have a car to get around. Yeah, you need to make money. And there's some level of, of, of reality check there that says, well, geez, you know, if I don't make that money, bad things are going to happen to me and I'm going to be sleeping on the street in the box. Well, you know, that is true in our, in our world. You've got to make something happen. 
So there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a fear factor there that that is a reality check as you get into the real world. But they, but try not to let fear be your motivating factor overall in regards to making the wrong choice. Because as Paul just told you, statistics show you're going to change your entire life. You're going to change your entire career path seven times before you retire. That's part of the process, folks. It's not getting to the end. It's the journey that's the magic. And that's it. You're going to learn. You're going to change. You're going to, you're going to be a different person 15 years from now than you are now. Just like you were. Are you the same person that you were two years ago? No. You're going to continue to grow and evolve. Do not be afraid of that change. Mr. Paul London has some great experience in dealing with the real world. And uh, Paul... Let's bring you on up here, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, why you're doing what you're doing, and some of the more salient points and important points that you want these young people to come away with in regards to getting real with themselves. Thanks. Please welcome Paul London. I think the point we're trying to make here today, um, based on real experience, and when I say that, uh, I go out and I job develop for people. And I constantly hear, whether it's down at the garage where I hang on weekends or talking with the clients that I deal with on a daily basis, there are no jobs, there's no work. And that is such a misconception in the reality of what I experience every day. We have local employers that I talk to on a daily basis. I mean, he touched on a few of the uh, occupations, machinists, welders, uh, in the health field, uh, in regards to working in the hospitals, people were turning work away because they don't have the skilled workforce. I showed Sam an article a uh, gentleman brought in that works up in the McKean County, Bradford area that I work with. <clears throat> and on the front page they were talking about the oil industry up in uh, McKean County and all around here, the drilling that's going on. And their biggest concern, I mean, it, it's amazing we hear this from everybody their biggest concern is the ability to fill the positions to do the job um, I talked with an individual on Friday who owns a local drilling company he's got to shut a rig down because he doesn't have skilled workers so I guess the point we're trying to make is there are jobs there's good family sustaining jobs in the area and what you guys got to do that aren't planning on going to college is network with neighbors, look at the ads that are in the paper, uh, pay attention to what's going on. I mean, it's, I can see by the reaction when Sam was, you know, it's like, oh, uh, you know, who cares about this stuff? Well, you know what? The rubber's gonna meet the road real quick for you guys. You're gonna go wild, and the real world's gonna be right there, and, you know, what we're trying to do is give you a little advice right now. Talk, talk to your family, talk to your neighbors, Talk to people, you know, I mean, if you know somebody that welds, um, get, get a little information and find out if you truly do have the skills to do the type of work that you think you want to do. The Paul, other, if I can ask you a question sure. about getting real. We talked about this, something you're so passionate about. You work with, these, with, with folks that are trying to change their lives on a daily basis. What advice can you give to young people in regards to being real with themselves and who they are and where their talents lie and what they ought to be doing? Well, I mean, it's very simple. Uh, you know, I always say it's not rocket science to figure out what you can do. You, you know what you can do. And if you're not sure or you have a perception of what you think is involved in an occupation, I'm going to give you a few websites, you know, because like Sam said, you know, that's, that's where you guys are today. We didn't have this uh, means of doing things whenever I was a student like yourself. ONET Online is a great one. You'll see up in the right-hand corner here a quick search. You just put in an occupation, whatever the job you think it is you want to do. or Use welding. You want, you know, let's, for example, what do you have up there? I put up welding. Okay. And then you just click on one of these links. Well, the big thing, look here, you see right now. Look, in demand, in demand. You know, exactly what we're talking about. Um, 
and then this will give you the essential skills, tasks, all that type of thing that's involved. Were any of you aware of that website? Yeah, there you go. Anybody got a pen and paper? Write it down. We, we're you giving do you tools. Google folks. or Yahoo or whatever. Own that. And any any job at all, and it, you might not get exactly the job you put in, but you're going to get into that cluster or that area and oh, find something related. It's online.onetcenter.org. You can see it right up here in the address line. You Google it. Okay. Yeah, just type in Onet. It'll come up. There's uh, another occupational website, handbook. Occupational Outlook <coughs> Handbook. Have you ever heard of that? Okay. The key thing there, the Occupational Outlook, is the job that you're thinking about you want to do going anywhere, the outlook, what, what's it doing? They're going to tell you based on the same thing. You've got a quick search up there, you put in the job you're looking for, and it's going to tell you, is it in demand or is it a job that's fading off? And then exactly what all is involved in that job, the environment you're working in, is it shift work, you know, all that type of stuff. Now, now's the time to be looking at that, and then when you do graduate, you have a good idea of exactly what it is. Now, we've been focusing kind of like on the jobs and the specific skills and tasks required to do those jobs. Actually, the biggest area of concern I hear from employers today is not so much the specific skills. I mean, you've got to have these, the basics, but they can teach you anything. It's the soft skills that they're really lacking. And when I say soft skills, it's the responsible behavior. Showing up when you're supposed to. Taking a little constructive criticism. Knowing when to go back to work at the end of the break. Good communication skills. Those are the areas that the employers really complain about today. You know. How many of you uh, probably think it's a big joke, you miss a lot of school, you don't have good attendance, and there's going to be no repercussion? You know, I'm sure there's probably a lot of you in here that's doing that. There is a repercussion. When the employers look at the records and they go to the high schools and they look back and see, gee, this kid missed 30 days his senior year, you know, that's going to come back, that impacts on your future. So those are the things too that you get, when Sam said get real, you got to be thinking about it now. It's not going to be long. You guys are going to be going out and looking for jobs. Now we're kind of you know like sounds like we're downplaying the college thing. We're not at all. We're just trying to emphasize that locally there are a lot of family sustaining jobs that you can go and get trained on the job. The employers just want you to show up and be responsible. Um, I don't have a heck, heck of a lot more to talk about. Uh, I was going to you know, hit on the change in the occupations seven times. You know, so here again, getting to that fear of making a wrong decision. Hey, you know, we, we've all started out probably in one area and ended up in a totally different one by the time we've got to be Sam's age, my age. So, you know, don't be afraid to try something for fear that, you know, you're going to be stuck in that path the rest of your life. Okay. Okay. We want to bring Ron up here. This is Ron Rank, and he's the HR director, as I said, for... Thank you. Oh, appreciate that. And I'm not quite your age yet, man. <laughs> Had to get that little bit. Okay. <laughs> The, uh, uh, this fella, the, you talk about the real world. This man runs human resources, meaning he's the hiring and the firing and the training guy for Penn Line Industries. Big company. You guys serve how many states? Uh, we got about nine, ten states, mid Atlantic region. Okay, this is the real deal, folks. This is the guy who's going to see the resumes and can look at somebody and go, this is lucky this person can even spell their name, let alone fill out an application. And then another application that goes, wow, I gotta get this guy or gal. And Ron's gonna talk with us very briefly today about 
the, again, some of the points that, that, that Paul was touching on, the soft skills that we were talking about, exactly what that means, the importance of integrity and all those things, and the hard skills, the importance of training and opportunities in what well, I guess we would loosely deem your company uh, Arbor Culture. You want to explain a little bit about what you do and uh, what we're talking about. This is Ron Rackin from Penlines, folks. Give it up for him, please. Thanks. First, let me ask, how many people here have heard of Penline or have any family that works for Penline? We have very many. Set? Wow. Quite a few. That's great. That. Yeah, that's awesome. But really what Penline is all about, we're called a specialty contractor. We do many different types of work. We build guardrails along the highways. We hang signs for highways. That's one of the divisions. We have an arboriculture uh, utility line clearance division. We call it the green side of our industry where we trim trees for electric lines. It's a real big area for us and we do a lot of recruiting from this area for that, air, for that type of work. We also have a commercial electric division. If any of you folks are doing elect an electrician vocation at school, we do wiring in commercial buildings. And we also have a division that builds overhead and underground electric system. You go down the highway, you see the electric lines and the poles. Well, we build those as well. But what I want to say, when I look out at you young folks here, I see so much potential. And as an employer, what I mean by potential, we look for potential. When we go out to hire, let's say we hire an entry-level employee who might not have a lot of skills. Well, it's more important for me as an employer, for us, to look for that potential because we can train on the skills. That's like Paul said, it's really no big deal to teach somebody skills and we're willing to invest in employees to do that. But how do we find potential? That's the key for us. And it's a lot of the points that Paul said. We look for responsibility. Are you going to show up to work? We look for things like uh, uh, interest. Are you interested? How do you show interest? Some of the ways to show interest would be you ask a lot of questions. Uh, we look for people who, should, who have patience, maybe, because it does take time to learn skills. Uh, and we also look for people, again, who are going to show up. Are you going to come to work and be interested? Now, one of the things, on-the-job training is great. And we do have some great on-the-job training. And let me just talk a little bit about our green industry or our tree work that, that we do that has a big demand on, uh, for, for employees. Um, again, we look for folks who are going to show up. We have a, an on-the-job training program that provides training in each classification. So we hire you, say, as a ground person at $11 an hour. Not a bad starting rate. Not a bad starting rate. We'll provide you with benefits, hospitalization, dental, retirement, and all those good things after you've worked two or three months. We'll give you that. If you work a year, we're going to give you $5,000 for tuition if you want to even gain a little more education along the way. But we do have a great on-the-job training program where after two years, you can actually be making $17 an hour leading a crew of tree workers. Um, if I leave you with anything here today, it doesn't matter how you learn, whether you go to college, whether you don't, whether you go to vocational uh, technical school, but just remember that life is a continuous learning process. And, and you're going to learn no matter where you go. If you go right to work after high school, you're probably going to get in some type of a training program. You're going to learn through training. You're going to learn through experience, what they call experiential learning. But just keep that in mind. If I leave, don't, don't ever set aside learning because you're always going to learn. And an example that I can tell you is myself. When I got out of high school, well, first of all, when I was going through high school, I only did what I needed to do to get through and get out. And I was good at it. Grades of Ds, maybe a few Cs here and there. But when I got out of high school, I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to go to work and make money so I could buy cars, drive down the road, and get away from home from time to time. Uh, and for me at that time, it was probably the right thing to do. I went and found a job that paid decent money. I got out and I got with a company called Penline, actually. I worked a few jobs first to, to establish sort of like a work record. And that's important, too. You want to try to build some integrity for yourself and build a record in any job, whether you're working at McDonald's, whether you deliver newspapers, whatever. Take it serious and start building a work record. 
But for me, I got out of high school, went to work. I was fortunate enough to advance. I paid attention. I was responsible. I showed up for work. I didn't forget about learning because I knew that was part of the process. And I've been with the company now about 26 years in a great position, making really good money and trying to help people coming in the door to sustain our company going forward. And we really have a lot of concerns about where we're going to find skilled employees to do the work uh, going down the road. Uh, for example, when you trim trees for utility companies, it seems like a, a simple type job, but it's not. It's a skilled trade takes at least two years to be proficient. And even when you start off as a ground person, dragging brush, running chippers, and using the machinery, you have a real important role. And we tell our employees that. If somebody's not doing that link of the process of delivering electricity to our nation's hospitals, learning institutions, whatever, it's real important. Somebody has to do that, no matter where you're at in the cycle, whether you're beginning or learning or whatever. It's, it's an important role. Uh, you can get into management with us probably after about four to five years, start making between $17 to $25 an hour, get into salary. <coughs> Just because we're, we're viewed as tree trimmers, in arbor culture, you can go many different directions in the green industry. You can get into being a commercial arborist, working in parks. Uh, you can be a municipal arborist, doing tree work in cities uh, and things like that. You can get off into teaching arbor culture. Um, I've brought like a flow chart that it, it shows you uh, different career paths. If you get a chance when you're done, you can come up and look at it. But in the bottom, it shows the entry level, and it shows the different progression you can make as you go up the uh, you're not gonna be able to see up that. the chain. But you can get up to, to be that research scientist if you want to. For me, when I was when I was managing three or four people on a crew, it was great. I had no problems. But then they said they turned me loose and said, "Here, go manage 85 people." And I said, "Yeah, I can handle that. I was really good at what I did." As soon as I got into that. 85 people group and people started to come in at me with different problems. I'm like, what is going on here and what can I do? Um, at that point in time, I was either going to sink or swim. I went back and got a little education. And then is when I really learned the value of education. It was a good thing I did. But I did along my career path go back to college um, and, and got my degree. It was a timing thing for me, though, personally. It wasn't right when, when I got out of high school. And for me, there was nothing wrong with that. Because what I am today is where I've been, and I wouldn't want it any different, actually. But you can do really good in the green industry, and, and from an employer, if you're starting an entry level, just be responsible, be yourself, show up, uh, take some initiative, and take some interest in learning. We'll teach you the skills. We'll provide you the programs, whether it's welding, whether it's whatever you get into. Employers are more than willing to help folks get into careers. Um, other than going to college and coming out, you know, in high-level jobs. Ron, let me let me ask you something. This is something that in our in our conversations and in our previous presentations have come up quite often. You know, how many times you, you folks sit and you go, you know, I could get a job here, but I don't really think I want to be spending the rest of my life doing that. So then you don't even bother to try because somehow or another you think that just because you take a job that that's going to be the be-all and the end-all. Give me your philosophy real quick, and then we only have 10 minutes left, and I want to open up the questions to everybody here. We have a bunch of videos that we wanted to play for you, but we're running out of time. Your philosophy as an employer, Ron, on that type of attitude. Well, if you're, if you're looking to get in to, let's say, Penn Line, you're not sure if you want to be there, but you need to make some money, and I hope I'm going the right way with this, Sam, but uh, give it a try. I tell all our employees, from the entry-level employees to our managers to wherever, there's two, there's two concepts at play here. One is, as an employee, yeah, you're giving value to your employer. That's a big thing. But number two is, you're also giving value to yourself and learning yourself. So anything you learn, if you come to Penline or Miller Welding, you're going to take it with you in life. So take advantage of those opportunities probably more than taking advantage of providing your employer with your services, even though we need those. We'll help you gain that. We'll help you build the value you can bring. Is that where you want to do? Yeah, it was, it was coming from comments that I've heard you bring up in the past. Yeah, and I've always thought myself, you know, I'm not only in this for Penline, but I'm in it for me, too. 
So, and that's the right way to look at it. You need to take care of yourself and learn through your own. Uh, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass, uh, well, let's thank Mr. Rankin for coming in. We're going to ask some questions here real quick. We have about 10 minutes left, folks. I'm going to pass around some flyers. This is, I really wish we would have had uh, a little more time to get into some of the tools that are available on the internet. This is something, I'm going to pass out a flyer. We've kind of, uh, the, the printers started running out of ink, so it looks all streaky. Uh, ignore that, and the content is there. This new website that we've launched, this is an initiative that's been set up with entrepreneurs, business leaders, community leaders, educators, counselors, and we are utilizing the power of the internet, the new media. And we have blended a, uh, a philosophy here, blending, uh, blending social networking, such as MySpace, right? That type of, of, of technology where you can set up buddy lists and you can put together groups and communicate with people. You can put a resume online. You can make a cool little video about yourself and connect directly with Mr. Rankin and say, here's my resume, check it out, download it here. Oh, by the way, here's me on the job recently, at a, or, or I recently got this particular certificate, whatever. Great career building tool. It merges sort of, like I say, MySpace with Monster.com. And again, this is an example of some of the cutting edge technology that's happening right here locally. They're right here. I do, I do this out of my home studio. And we're serving a marketplace around all of Pennsylvania. It's really dynamic stuff. And actually, I want to throw this out there from an employer standpoint, from an, an entrepreneur standpoint. If any of you young people are interested in careers in multimedia, I can guarantee you I can blow your mind with what you can do with the latest digital media technologies. So if anyone is interested in learning about video production, website design, any of this kind of stuff, and wants to work on some sort of internship or come to some of our classes that we're holding, you can get in touch with me through this website. I'm going to pass these flyers around. While we're doing that, let's open up the floor, last 10 minutes, to some questions. And you guys can go to the website and watch all the videos. I'll put your video up there, too. Um, you can watch all the videos online at another time, and we, we don't have the time today. So let me pass these around. Does anybody have any questions for these gentlemen? Come on, folks. Now's your opportunity. Anybody got any questions? <laughs> Comments? Anything? Yeah, well, go stop, brother. Go ahead. Where's like the closest pen line at? Hey, that's a good question. The question was, where's the closest pen lines at? Well, pen line is sort of like, here's a, here's a little prize for uh, asking a good question. Thank you. You squeeze it, you'll get the light. <clears throat> Penline is a mobile company, and we actually provide commuting assistance to our employees. We recruit in regions. There's, there's really no office of Penline in Clearfield County, but we probably, have, we probably have about 120 employees, but we provide company pickup trucks and vans uh, to responsible employees, and they meet, let's say they meet on Sunday night or Monday morning early with their crews, and then they might travel down to Virginia or to Ohio or in different areas to go to work. But uh, the, key, the key to finding a job at Penline will be just to get on our website, www.penline.com, and you can actually apply to work right there. So we can call our application right there. We have an application online that you can type it right in, that's right. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Comments? Uh, for Penline, like, what do you mostly look at for like, an application or a Yeah, the, the question was, for Penline, what do we usually look at in an application or a resume? Well, of course we look for skills based on what we do, but we more look for someone who probably lives in the region where we have a lot of recruitment going on, we look for somebody, again, who's responsible. We'll call you up. We'll ask you some questions about well, what do you want to do? What's your interest here? Why do you want to work for Penline? Uh, and we look for people who demonstrate things uh, that show responsibility, that maybe have a track record. We'll ask you, where did you work? Uh, so what you really want to do is you want to, you want to demonstrate a good history of yourself, a good work history, number one. Uh, if you don't have that, don't worry about that. Um, we're willing to give young people a chance. Again, it, it's about showing potential, and I see a lot of potential in young folks, I really do. Is there an age limit? Uh, yeah, 
Is there an age limit? You have to be 18 years old to work at Penn Line be because of the type of work. Who asked that question? Where are you? Put your hand up. I don't want to show this that part. Somebody get it. Make sure you get one before you leave. In the back here. Yeah, I think we're out, we're out of flyers. How long does the training take? Well, in our tree and right away operation, when you come in board, you start right first day, you'll start as a ground person trainee. And you work at your own pace, and we give you a, a list of skills and proficiencies that you have to learn. And you learn them at your own pace based on the experiences you get on the job. But in a matter of probably two years, you can become a top tree trimmer in our industry. That's a good question. And when you start, you'll make about $11 an hour. And when you're a top trimmer, you'll probably be about $17 or $18 an hour. Question? Yeah, do you work on your own trucks? Do we work on our trucks? Yeah. Or, yeah we, we have a fleet of, we have a huge fleet of equipment. We hire people outside to do the work. We have our own shop in Scottsdale that does work. Uh, we'll, Wherever we work, we work uh, we'll find local shops to do the work. <clears throat> but we do hire a few mechanics, not a lot. They're roving mechanics that go around in our operations to work on our equipment. Opportunities aren't real high there, but from time to time we do hire out uh, mechanics. Any other questions? Some really good questions. Yeah, really, we appreciate you guys' interest. This is great. Any, uh, any other uh, questions for Paul? I have one. Yes. Um, do you drug test these people that you're going to hire? Uh, that's a good question. <clears throat> and it goes back to the question about what do you look for in the application. Well, we drug test everybody who comes in the door. If you want to get hired at Penline, you have to pass a drug test because we do not want to put anybody out in the field working who might be under the influence. And we do this mainly to protect our employees and the public, and, and it's, it's just a, the right thing to do. So if you are a drug user, we probably, we probably have an issue with that question. Oh, that's a really good question. What if you're on prescription drugs? Will I pass or fail my drug test? We have a doctor who we pay. They're called a medical review officer. And when you take a drug test, if there's a prescription that shows up in your system, the doctor will call you just to verify that. And they'll report the results to us as negative, And you've passed. So don't worry. We test for five different types of drugs. We test for marijuana, PCP, angel dust. We test for barbiturates, cocaine, uh, opiates, uh, and those types of things. So we, we just have to do that. Do you continue to test even after they're hired? Do you do like brand? That's a good question. Do we test after we're hired? We'll do a pre-employment test. Then we'll do random tests as well. Uh, we do randomly test every quarter, every three months. We have a random selection where and the employees, if you picture your name in this big wheel and these little balls rolling around, we, we take a random selection every quarter and we do testing. It's all about safety, really. We have to ensure that our workers are safe out there and the public is safe. Because when you're facing 33,000 volts of electricity on a daily basis, two or three feet from your face, just, you have to be focused. Question. You pay for your training. We, we pay for the training. Yep. We pay for all your safety equipment and the training that we give you, and we provide all the tools. The only thing you need to bring is safety toed footwear. That we don't provide. Yeah, in the back end. What's that? For the schooling? Yeah. For the training? No, we, we provide you with on-the-job training and safety training. And if you want to go to, let's say, arborist classes at a college, we pay up to $5,000 a year tuition for you to go to school. And you only for that type of tuition, you'll have to work 12 months. Or if you leave within 12 months, you have to pay that tuition back. But the on-the-job training we provide for free. That's another thing when I talk about it. Learn for yourself out there in the world because 
if you go through a couple of years of training and then you walk away from Penline, shame on us for losing you, but you're taking some skill with you along the way too. And this is a perfect example of what I run into daily with the different types of companies. They do the same type of thing, from the drug testing to the training. It's, it's a very similar situation. We invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in training. It's a real big area. It's all about human resources and taking care of the people. Labor is extremely important in, our, our, in what we do. We can't live without, we can't have a, a company without labor. Excuse me. Um, can I get a, a copy of one of the nice looking flyers? They're going to make some extra copies for us, and I'll distribute them down in the, uh, in the next place for you guys. Do we have time for any more questions? I think we probably need to wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it up. Yeah. Just okay. Minutes, yeah. Good questions. Thank you. Yeah, this was great. I, I, I got to tell you, I'm pleasantly, uh, I, I'm very pleased at your attentiveness and your politeness and your respect for our guests. Thank you so much for coming. Please join us online. Get on there. Even if you don't have a resume to post, you know, get on there now and start interacting with others and learn as much as you can. All right, folks, thanks for coming. Take care. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa.